Lightroom Classic. Where to begin? We are in the library. This is where you import. This is where you change titles, keywords. This is where you create folders and collections. Develop looks real similar, so you always have to pay attention to where you are up here. This is where you edit your images. It's not Photoshop. You cannot bring items from other images into images. That's Photoshop. But you can change warmth, warmth or coolness, add more red, um, you can create masks and darken or lighten areas. You can remove objects, birds flying through a scene that you don't want. Um, you just cannot add a picture to a picture. Um, I never use map. Even though I've traveled a lot, I do not use map. Um, if you were a journalist traveling around the world and you wanted to lo locate where you've been, Korea right there, South Korea, I've never been to North, um, that's what maps are for. Never have used the book feature, even though I make books all the time. I use Blurb for that. I've never used Slideshow. I've never used Web. But we will be using Print. Even though we're not printing in this class, we're going to be using the Print feature to make our contact sheets, which we will get to in another lesson. But what I'm going to do right now is import my photos into my library. And if you're working in the iGo Lab, that library is where? On your external hard drive. For the rest of you, your library is in your pictures folder. How do you import? Simple. Import feature here or file import photos and videos here. But before I start, very important. Wherever you import from, and I'm actually importing photos that I put on my hard drive, if you're working on your own computer, you probably have your photos in your pictures folder. Where is your pictures folder? Home, you, pictures. There's my Lightroom catalog that opened the second I opened Lightroom. So you could have your photos all stored here on your hard drive, your personal CPU, but I've got mine here on my external hard drive. However you have your photos set up, if they're in folders by dates, or they're separated out, they must stay wherever they are when you import, and then you never move them. Because if I then decide, oh, um, these are from when are they from? 14, I could put them up here. 13, I could put it up here. But I got to do that first. Because once you tell Lightroom where the pictures are, that they're either in this folder or they were out here, if you then move them after you import them, Lightroom has lost them. Lightroom knows I'm importing from Seagate Backup Plus Drive, from ARTS 156, from Photos, from 13, if I import Snowflake, or if I import these two that it came from this folder. So again, if I want to move these out here, I do that before the import. Or if I want to move them back in, I do that before the import because Lightroom, unlike photos, if you use that, if you took photographic explorations and you used photos, unlike photos, photos actually makes a copy of the picture and puts it into the library, making the library become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Lightroom doesn't do that. Lightroom is merely tracing where it came from. It's creating a root directory to where it came from. So if you don't, if you move it on Lightroom later, 
then Lightroom, it breaks the link and it doesn't know where it is. So please make sure you organize your photographs however you want them to be before import. Can't tell you how many students have come to me and what happens is, uh, we'll go over here, what happens is, is that you'll see them, all your photos perfectly here, but then when you go to develop, it'll pull up the picture, but there'll be a little tagline right here that says it cannot find the image. It can't do anything to the image because it can't find it. And that's because you moved it. Um, I actually had one student who had all of her photos on, the, on a thumb drive. She was always importing from her thumb drive. And she was in develop and she had the little icon here saying that the file couldn't be found. And she's like, why, why, why? And I'm like, where are your photos? She's like, what do you mean? Where, where are your photos? Ah, the, on my thumb drive. Where's your thumb drive? And she pulls it out of her pocket. Uh, the computer can't read her pocket. So you got to have your photos where the computer can read them. All right, so we're going to go back to the library. You can go to import here. You can go to import here. Because Lightroom wants to work off the hard drive, that's where it's going to source first. So you guys in the Mac, in the computer lab of iGo, if you're in the iGo lab, it's already, it's trying to source that, that pictures folder again. Remember, that's where we got our catalog from. It's trying to source from there. You guys at home, that's fine. You know, if that's where your pictures are, that's fine. But you guys in the, in the iGo computer lab, uh-uh, uh-uh, we don't want to be there. Close that up. We don't want to be on the Mac hard drive. You want to be on your hard drive. I'm going to go into Arts 156, into Lightroom, into Photos. And I can import all of these. I actually don't know what these two pictures are. So um, I'm going to import from 2013. Oh, look. I put my snowflake there. There's my JPEG, and there are my two RAW files that I made this JPEG. Um, 2014, what have I got? Oh, my baby when he was a baby, and my cat who's no longer with us. Oh, and I didn't get to go to Maine this summer. So we'll import these because this will make me sad. This is where my Maine house is, and I miss it. So um, select what you want to import or not. I want it all. So this is it's not imported yet. Just asking me what I want. So I want all this. And I hit import. It may take a while or not. That went pretty fast. You'll probably see right here. Went pretty fast. And here they are. Do I want to import some more? Sure. So I'm going to go to import again. Let's see what's here. Oh, that was the super moon. And these are pictures that I took for my HDR demo. Let's import these. Uh-oh, where did my other photos go? Notice where I am. Previous import, all photographs. There they all are. In order, chronologically. Now, we're going to put them in order. So let's say this is my get to know my camera assignment. We'll call this part A. We'll call this part B. And I'm not done with C yet, because I only have one picture. We are going to put them in collections to keep them organized. Because as the semester goes on, you're going to have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs, and you're going to want to be able to find where they are. So what we're going to do is make these things called collections. I don't make smart collections. I've never used smart collections. I just make collections. For your get to know your camera, I want you to make three collections for part A, part B, part C. All the pictures you took for part A, we're going to put in part A. All the pictures for part B, we're going to put in part B and part C. So we're going to make a collection. You can have your items selected multiple you hold the shift key if they're all in a row hold the shift key if you want to go out of order hold the command key you can deselect things or hold the command key and select them again so you can have them already selected go to collections create new collection and i'm going to call this get to know your camera A. 
Great. 11 photos. It looks like all your photos went away again because you're in your collection that you just made, uh, that I just made. Go back to all photographs. 12 through 29. Or you can make your collection get to, whoops, to know your camera B. Great. Nothing's in it. Go back to all photographs and drag, uh-oh, wait, dra if you ever want to move a picture, you have to grab it by the picture. This is considered an information box. This is where you can flag something to get your attention. You can rate something by giving it uh, a star. Um, you can, you know, have things that are two stars, three stars, five stars are great. You can flip its orientation. When you start editing things, little buttons and things are going to pop up here so you know what kind of edit you've done. So, but in order to actually move it, you got to grab it from the picture. Notice now I can move it and I can put it in part B. I can have all of these selected. Again, drag from the picture and put in part B. And again for part C, new collection, get to know your camera C. Great. So that is what I want you to do for get to know your camera. A, B, and C in their own collections, almost said catalog, their own collections so that we can then make contact sheets. Next lesson. Bye.